Hi, I'm Matthew Tosh. The junk food science lessons use a range of discussion-based learning approaches to engage students in structured conversation and to help them make decisions about food and healthy eating. Purposeful discussion is essential for successful group work. The teachers you're about to see have created learning environments which encourage students to communicate effectively, learn from each other and try out new ideas. You'll see that the teachers achieve this by establishing ground rules, promoting good listening skills and using discussion agendas. Note how the teachers scale up the discussion, starting the students in pairs, followed by small groups and then finally to the whole class. I'm very much a person who loves group work. I think um, it enhances their communication skills and they're helping each other. And instead of me asking and, and picking someone out of the crowd, I think they'd be more willing to sort of um, share their ideas if they've spoken about their ideas in a group and actually got some reassurance from a, a fellow student as well and, and sort of I think they'll, they'll be less frightened with sharing their ideas. Yeah, instead of like banning so many foods, they could ban some but then do, do other things instead. Right, like do exercise. like free sports and stuff out yeah, of like school. Yeah, or... like decrease prices in, like, yeah. in like swimming sessions free and swimming stuff. And stuff. Yeah. They could also like have like where they improve awareness about like the healthy eating so they know more about like what they need because they can't just ban fat because people actually do need fat. Yeah. Like some people need more fat than others. Yeah. I think if you're looking at facilitating good discussion within the classroom, you really need to first of all choose your groups carefully to make sure that you have planned which who's got which students are going to work with who, so that you don't have one student who's going to dominate. Likewise, you don't have students who are just going to sit back and let everybody else do the work. The higher ability and the older the students are, the less framework you need but you do need to be sure about these are the topics we're going to talk about I want you to by the end of this particular set time period British will have come up with a certain amount of responses or ideas I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes just to discuss with your partner what you think the answers to these following questions were and then we're going to take some ideas about these questions in a moment so Two minutes, discuss with your partner, I'm looking for the answers to these questions, please. So, they need to be sure about what they need to be doing in that task, what they need to be talking about, and what is expected of them by the end of that task. Um, set time limit, and that time limit, can be, you can be flexible with it, so you can say five minutes, but if the stuff dries up, finish in four. If they're doing really well, it could take a few more minutes over it. But uh, you need to be clear and have sort of a clear framework for them to work in. Once you've set the parameters of the discussion, the teacher's role then is to really go around and draw out ideas from the students, do a lot of listening. You need to listen into what the students are saying and how they're saying it. You said most of the nation will become fat by 2050 if we don't ban junk food from the 16th. Is junk food the main cause of obesity in this country? And so it could be from your parents, so it could be like fat, and then you could inherit it off them. So do you mean inherit it genetically, that like you are predisposed to put yeah. on weight? With high ability groups, you really want to be spending your time listening and picking up ideas from them that you can bring and talk about as a group.